Have you ever asked yourself, is what is happening to me real? Is this really happening to me? By asking ourselves these questions, we simultaneously answer them. Apparently, when we feel the need to ask them, we feel something. But the more interesting thing is where does it happen? What is reality? And are we actually real at all? Or is it just an artificially created environment? Is it possible to live a simulated reality? This hypothesis seems impossible to prove, but maybe after this video, it will seem much more possible in reality. The hypothesis that we live in a computer simulation is no longer the stuff of science fiction, but is supported by some of the most respected scientists and an entire branch of science called information physics, which suggests that space-time and matter are not fundamental phenomena, but in fact, physical reality is fundamentally made up of bits of information from which our sense of space-time arises. By comparison, temperature arises from the collective motion of atoms. No individual atom inherently possesses temperature. This leads to the extraordinary possibility that our entire universe may actually be a computer simulation. The CEO of the company he founded, SpaceX, Elon Musk, is one of the biggest proponents of the theory that humans live in a simulated universe. He openly shares his belief in more than one interview that the probability that we are not living in a computer simulation is one in a billion. According to him, the advancement of technology and computing power is increasing at an exponential rate, and it is entirely possible that we are already living in a simulation created by a highly developed civilization. He says that this idea is not new, and has been debated by philosophers and computer scientists for decades, but advances in technology now make it much more plausible. According to Musk, it is important to consider the idea of simulated reality because it has implications for our understanding of consciousness and the nature of reality itself. The theory that we live in a simulation gained more popularity after a 2003 publication by the world-renowned Swedish philosopher and Oxford University professor Nick Bostrom. The theory claims that the world we live in is nothing more than a computer simulation. In his article, Bostrom suggests three possible scenarios. One, the percentage of human civilizations that reach a stage where they are able to create such a simulation is very close to zero. That is, we are more likely to be destroyed or destroy ourselves before we reach the point in our development where we can perform such a technical feat. Two, the percentage of post-human civilizations interested in running simulations of their ancestors is very close to zero. In other words, our species has changed so much by this point that we are no longer interested in running such simulations, or no one who is interested has the access to what is needed to create them, or running them is prohibited. 3. The percentage of people with lives like ours who live in a simulation is very close to 100. If the other two are false, then we are left with option number 3. That is, our species developed the necessary technology and began creating countless simulations of its ancestors over time. This would mean that the majority of people who live on Earth like us are in a simulation. We just don't realize it. Something many other minds have suspected for centuries, but did not have the concept of computing to formulate logically sound theories. According to modern scientists who deal with this theory, there could be billions of simulated worlds and only one real one. That is why the probability that we are in the real thing is extremely small. This probably all sounds absurd to you when you consider what you see with your eyes, hear with your ears, smell with your nose, and feel with a touch. Let us not forget that all we have as perceptions and experiences are actually brain impulses in our cranial box. By affecting certain brain centers, absolutely any sensation can be achieved without being able to distinguish it from what we call real. One example of this is amputees who sometimes feel pain in their missing limbs. One of the visionaries of this theory is the famous American science fiction writer Philip K. Dick. After he passed away, his novels were screened and became an unprecedented success. To his inspiration, we owe titles like Blade Runner, Total Recall, Screams, Minority Report, and others. He saw The Matrix long before everyone else, and for that reason, he remained misunderstood. 
Dick believed that there are many universes, and sometimes those from other realities interfere with ours. It's kind of like a so-called bug in video games, an error in a computer program or code that causes it to malfunction or behave unexpectedly. Dick claims to have had visions about this and based the 1961 novel on them, The Man in the High Castle. Most likely, we have all experienced this effect of interweaving of universes from different realities, which may be the cause of the so-called Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect is a phenomenon in which many people remember an event or fact differently from what actually happened. The name comes from the widespread false memory that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s, not in 2013 after he was even released. The phenomenon is often described as a collective false memory. Let's check if you are affected by the Mandela Effect. Imagine for a second the man from the game Monopoly. Most people imagine the guy from the game with a monocle, but he doesn't have one. Remember what Darth Vader says to his son in Star Wars 5, The Empire Strikes Back? If your answer is, Luke, I am your father, congratulations, you too are subject to the Mandela Effect. He doesn't actually address Luke, but states, No, I'm your father. No, I am your father. Okay, one last try with the Queen in Snow White, who said, Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Well, actually, you guess where this is going, right? She actually said, Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the most beautiful of all? Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one? Maybe until a few minutes ago, you were not even aware of everything that has been said so far. Another example of a bug in our simulation is the so-called déjà vu. The name comes from a French phrase that translates already seen and refers to the feeling of experiencing something for the first time, but having the feeling that it has already been experienced. It is a phenomenon that is difficult to define and understand, and scientists are still investigating its causes. Deja vu can be described as a feeling in which a person feels certain that they have already seen or experienced some new sensation. It feels as if the event has already taken place or happened recently, although the exact circumstances surrounding the previous situation are unclear. The experience is often brief and may be accompanied by feelings of confusion or disorientation. We are sure that some of the listed situations have already been experienced by you. You walk into a new building and it feels like you've already been there. You meet a new person for the first time, but it feels like you've known him for a long time. You see a new place for the first time, but you feel as if you saw it in a dream. You hear a new song for the first time, but it feels like you've heard it before. Now that you've gone through the stuff of our everyday life, let's look for more serious scientific evidence. If people live in a computer simulation, how can they understand it? According to David Brin, a scientist and one of the most famous writers in the world of science fiction, there is a back door in the simulation that would allow the alleged masterminds to control the participants. If we live in a simulation, then everything is software, including every atom in our bodies, Bryn reasoned, and there may be back doors that are left open. Marvin Minsky, the legendary father of artificial intelligence, points out that it is very difficult to know whether we are living in a simulation or not. This is only possible if a mistake has been made or some of the laws of physics are not exactly as they should be. In this case, he continues, it becomes clear that the universe is not as difficult to understand as scientists thought, and even ways can be found to change it. For centuries, science has come across phenomena that it still cannot explain without doubting the reality of our world. So is Thomas Young's experiment of 1803. Young made a physical experiment of fundamental importance to science. He directs a beam of light through an opaque screen with two parallel slits, behind which a projection screen is placed. It is logical for the light to reach the screen, creating two parallel stripes. In reality, the light spread through the stripes, in which dark and light areas alternate. In other words, light behaves like a wave. Physicists have further developed this experiment by finding that photons behave like particles only when we observe them. In other cases, 
their behavior is like waves. Just like in simulations, only those objects that have been observed are visualized. According to the Copenhagen interpretation of 1927, the mere observation of a microscopic particle, such as the atom, is crucial. Stars and galaxies only become real when our telescopes capture their light, Marcus Cowan claims. In 2006, scientists did the experiment in question again, but this time with one additional modification. The particles were again fired through the two slits onto a projection screen. This time, however, the observation was made at a time when the particle had already passed through a slit but had not yet reached the projection screen. The result was amazing. The behavior of the particles at the moment they were observed was as if they had not passed through the two holes before the measurement and did not behave like waves. It's as if the particles knew they were going to be observed before it happened. We recently told you about physicists who received a Nobel Prize for proving that the universe is not locally real. You can find a link to the video below in the description. DNA that contains a computer virus. In 2017, a group of researchers at the University of Washington demonstrated that they could embed malicious computer code into physical strands of DNA. Their goal was to prove that computers working in the field of gene sequencing are vulnerable to attacks. But they may also have inadvertently revealed that what we perceive as biological reality has actually been computer code all along. According to Einstein, the fastest possible speed in our universe is that of light. The faster an object moves, the slower time passes for it. If he reaches the speed of light, time will stop completely. This concept is similar to the delay of graphics processing in simulations when the movement becomes very intense and the necessary calculations become difficult for the hardware. The phenomenon happens trillions of times faster in the universe than it does in modern computer games, but the principle remains the same. The more we search, the evidence seems to pop up from everywhere. Quantum entanglement, the Big Bang, the so-called wormholes, the placebo effect, the theory of multiverses, dark matter and dark energy, the question of what comes after the end of the cosmos, and more. This is only a small part where we find facts and clues to support this theory. The idea of reincarnation fits perfectly with the theory that we live in a simulation. In games, we have many lives, and we can start anew by choosing a character to play with. Living in a simulation also explains the possibility of seeing your previous life through regression, as well as separating your soul from your body, astral projection. Telepathy, the power of thought, the paranormal, all these are much easier to explain in a simulated world than in the real material world. Let's assume we put aside our prejudices and go along with all of this. Perhaps life begins the moment we realize we don't have one. Interesting thoughts of a character of Hervé Letellier from the novel Anomaly. Simulation or not, we're still here. We feel, we think, we feel, and so on. We must not stop doing what sets us apart from the machines. Maybe kindness is what keeps the simulation going. Perhaps it and what comes from it is what keeps simulators interested. If we all ignore the possibility of hope and goodness, and indulge in badness and basic inhumanity, the result could be the most terrifying thing imaginable. Someone, somewhere, in a dimension different than ours, simply turns off the simulation. Share with us in a comment, what is your truth on this topic? More videos about our past, future, and present can be found in our channel. Consciousness encourages you to think outside of the general framework and to keep searching for new knowledge because if we all think the same, then someone doesn't think at all.